Hello everyone, glad you can make it to the lesson before the lesson. If there's a most important thing to learn in computer science, it might be computational thinking. Computer science, the golden arena of endless well-paying jobs, needs problem solvers from all backgrounds, but appears surrounded by a thick wall of incomprehensible ones and zeros, self-righteous nerd minions, and endless differential equation nightmares. This video textbook attempts to create an entrance through that wall by teaching programming basics in the language of real people. This video is a lecture about computer science beyond just normal programming. To watch this week's lecture covering programming tools and methods, click here. And to watch a real-life coding example in three different languages, click here. Computational thinking is a problem-solving method that the human brain is very good at, and computer brains respond well to it. It's the process of turning a real-life problem into a set of instructions a computer or a human can understand. It doesn't involve writing any code. In fact, it often works best at a whiteboard. Let's try it. Here's a real-world problem. Let's build a house. That sounds like a lot of work. So where do we get started? Let's first start by decomposing the problem. Or in other words, let's break it down into smaller problems we can understand. Let's see. We know we need construction documents to keep everyone on the same page. We're going to need a foundation, uh, framing, drywall, insulation, electrical, plumbing, the roof, and I'm sure there's gonna be lots of finish work. We're also going to need some workers. Each of these is a small problem we can tackle. Next, let's look for patterns. Are there similarities between these smaller problems? Well, all of them rely on the construction documents, so let's make sure that those are easy to access. All of them require a lot of material, a lot of measuring, many require a lot of cutting, and all of them require fastening. Each job has a lot of differences from the others, but the tasks we just identified are consistent throughout the project. While we're finding similarities, it's important to simplify each pattern to its most streamlined form. We could talk about how fastening pipes together is different than fastening 2x4s, but that really seems like a detail that could be handled later on, so let's leave it out. Now let's think about how we might represent our data. The nerd word for this step is called abstraction. We can do this in a lot of ways, but let's just go with what makes sense. We know that each of our smaller problems happens sequentially, and by that I mean each generally happens one after the other. The foundation has to be poured before we can install the frame. We also know that the same 10 workers will be with us through the whole project. Maybe we can break them up into teams. We also know that while each phase has a lot in common, each phase is a little different than the other. So we'll have to train everyone differently and have different materials for each step. Finally, we move on to algorithm design. Whoa, hold on. I thought you weren't going to use any big words. You're right. That is, that is a lot. It almost sounds like a deep math concept, like logarithms or something. And yes, it is a math term, but it's easy to understand. An algorithm is a set of instructions to follow. That's it. The navigation steps you get back from your GPS is an algorithm. Online tax preparation software, an algorithm. Instructions to cook mac and cheese is an algorithm. Makeup tutorials, an algorithm. While all of these are algorithms, we haven't determined whether they are good algorithms or not. It goes without saying that a good algorithm is going to create the desired result, but it will also do it the most efficient way we possibly know. To do that, we have to use our patterns and simplified data to build the most simple set of instructions we can. First, we know that there are repeatable steps. Number one, look at the blueprints. Number two, purchase material. Number three, measure material. Number four, cut material. Number five, install material. I guess we also identified that each worker needs to be trained differently for each phase. Let's put that one right here. Great, we can use these steps over and over again. Let's attach them to each phase and put our phases in order. Let's see, first we want to dig and pour the foundation. Then we can install the framing. Might be nice to have a roof over our head at that point. And then some plumbing, some electrical, some insulation. Then we can put the drywall on. And the flooring and some finish work. There we go, we have our algorithm. The final step in our computational thinking is fine tuning our algorithm. For example, we could split the workers into teams. Two guys can handle the training and communication. Two guys can purchase the materials. Two guys can measure. Two guys can cut. Two guys can install. That way, everyone can just be an expert in their own responsibility, and some jobs can happen at the same time. When nerds talk about doing two jobs at the same time, they use the word asynchronous, or async for short. Now, we might go back and move some of our guys around if we find that installation takes a little more time than cutting and measuring. That's part of the fine-tuning process. Computational thinking is more of an art than math. It takes creativity and vision. And that's why humans are so good at it. Look at the problems in your life. Is there one that you could solve with computational thinking? Try it out this week and let me know how it goes in the comments. Mm -hmm.